Hi, I'm Jonathan from GameSpot, and we're live at the Gears of War Tree events in Singapore. Right now, with me here with me is uh, Jim Brown. He's the lead level designer for Gears of War Tree, the third and final chapter of the game. So, tell us a bit about yourself, Jim. Uh, I have been uh, in the industry for uh, many, many years now. I've been with Epic for almost 10 years, and uh, really proud to bring this last installment uh, to the Gears of War franchise because it represents almost a decade worth of work for us. And it's a, a big story and a big game, and so we've got a lot of new surprises in store for people. So tell us more about, like, what is the theme of level designing for this game? One of the big themes that we've been talking about is uh, that we're all stranded now. In the scheme of the world, like, the government is gone, the, the cities have collapsed, and uh, everybody is just struggling to survive in any way that they can. Um, and that's, that's represented well in many different ways within the game. We're also talking about uh, brotherhood to the end because, as I mentioned, there is no more government, there's no more orders to go and fight the Locust. It's just groups of friends struggling to survive and trusting each other uh, uh, and doing anything they can to get by. So we've seen the ruins in the first game. Mm -hmm. We've seen like the underground Locust area and snow as well in the second game. So what can we expect from levels this time in part 3? We have always do our best to make everything we can, every successive game bigger and better. And this game is no exception. There's all kinds of new environments. Uh, I don't want to give too much away without uh, talking about things that we've already shown. Uh, but I will say that it opens up in a very uh, familiar place, something uh, that people will recognize and feel comfortable in, hopefully. Uh, and then it moves on to this aircraft carrier. Only the aircraft carrier Instead of the helicopters and the planes landing on it, they've turned that space into uh, a gardens and farmland because this is the only way they can survive because the land itself is falling apart and collapsing due to the threat of the land down. So everything is in a complete state of ruin and total destruction. So regard, in regards to multiplayer, does symmetry still play a big part in multiplayer? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we, have, we have very symmetrical maps. Uh, we have some that are asymmetrical, but symmetry is important to us just for balance reasons. Um, although this time around we did make a definite pass at uh, making them visually asymmetric. Uh, so you know immediately when you spawn where you are and uh, can come up with strategies and formulate things that way. And we've also added an overhead map with labels on it so you can see uh, where your team is in the world and immediately know where to go fight and what to call things and you say like I need help at you know the, the, the clock tower or whatever it is. Will there be any old maps from the first and second game coming back in Gears of War 3 for multiplayer? There's going to be uh, Gridlock which is kind of our classic map uh, that you've seen and it's kind of really helped us define what multiplayer was in the Gears franchise and so that's been represented in, in Gears 1, 2 and it will be again in 3. Tell us more about like uh, how long how long was the process just coming out with new levels for multiplayer? Like what was what was given into consideration when you start building new stuff for right. part uh, three? So we honestly never stopped building. Uh, from the time we started on Gears One, we never really stopped, and it's just kind of rolled from game to game. We always have crazy new designs in our heads as designers, and the team over there is fantastic, and they always want to try new things and iterate and change and, and come up with bigger and better things. So we've tried really hard this time around to make the maps more dynamic. So there's always a lot of motion, um, things you can interact with, cover you can destroy or push over, or you know just things to make the world feel a lot more alive. And that map in particular has one that changes the world because you can affect the way the map plays out. Um, they don't all do that, but they all do have something in them um, that is special and moving and alive, so to speak. Since the beta is already over, like since April, mm -hmm. uh, what kind of feedback do you get in terms of levels from the community? I think there was something like 50,000 emails that came back, all feedback from the beta. Um, so we made pretty dramatic changes to a lot of the levels. Uh, trenches, for example, had kind of a dead end trap spawn where people can get trapped in there. So we completely worked, uh, reworked the layout of that map to add an escape so that people could get out. Uh, we did a lot of weapon balancing, um, and the main changes we made were really server side. So even though that uh, the beta was significantly better, in my opinion, than the Gears 2 experience, it's going to be even better when the game launches. Uh, on September 20th because of everybody participating in the beta and getting us the feedback that we needed. In terms of weapons, what are the most common complaints? A lot of it is people trying to learn to adapt. Gears 1 and 2 were very largely about being 
a shotgun game, playing with an Asher. And rather than try and fix that, we actually tried to look at it from a different approach in that we wanted to give people uh, the opportunity to use that the way they want to use it, but also give other people a way to counter it. Because the problem is uh, you get a really experienced player in Gears 2 that can wall bounce up and shoot you before you can do anything about it. So we tried to uh, implement new systems and new weapon balance where if you saw that guy coming, you had options. And, you, know, you didn't have to face him and be like, oh, I'm terrible with that gun, I'm just going to die. Now there's something you can actually do about it. We got a lot of feedback about the Retro Lancer and the beta. Uh, we've rebalanced the way it works a little bit. There's a lot of different factors that go into the weapon balance. There's ammo count, there's accuracy, there's the kick on the rifle, there's the amount of ammo, there's the range, there's the damage level. I mean, there's all kinds of different various factors that we kind of tweak and toy with. Each rifle has a very specific role and we wanted to excel in that role and uh, make sure that it highlights that weapon's capabilities. What's your particular favorite weapon when you're fighting in a wow. 5 versus 5 uh, match? Uh, 5v5, it depends on the map really. Um, overall, I really like the Retro Lancer, I think. Uh, I'm a very aggressive player. I don't necessarily care if I'm going to die. I want to run in and just charge someone, uh, stick them with the bayonet and lift them up over my shoulder, or get in close and spray them as much as I can. Um, so I think that's just a, a blast to play with that kind of gun. So it, and it's safe to say that if this is the final part of the trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, what can we expect from Epic in the future? I don't know. I mean, this is definitely the end of a story arc. Uh, this is hopefully uh, we will convey to people that this is the story of Marcus Phoenix and Delta Squad and everything that they've gone through. But uh, we have uh, best-selling novels that are out there. We've got a whole a world of comic books. There's a lot of history and a lot of the world that we haven't explored. So where we go from here, we don't know. Okay, if let's just say like Epic, if you had no commitments of any studios whatsoever, if you wanted to launch a new project out of there, mm -hmm. what kind of genre can you expect? We're a very di group, diverse group of, of people making this game, right? And we all have, we all want to make the game that we want to play. And um, so everybody has their own opinions and uh, everybody is able to pitch and, and come up with new ideas. So we've got guys that are fans of card games, we've got guys that like RPGs and RTS and, and top down and side scroller. I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff that we can do. So um, even within or without uh, the franchise, if we went in a completely new direction, it could be anything at all. We just don't know. All right, uh, thanks a lot, Jim. Yeah, thank you very much. It's nice to meet you.